Hi, and welcome to CardioFit. My name is Jennifer Menzer, and this is my partner and student for the day, Emily. Hi. As you can see, we have our chairs here, as well as our mats and water. We are going to be introducing a chair workout for you today. So take a few moments to get a chair from the house. Um, you can use a folding chair, you can use one of your dining room chairs, you can use a children's chair if you prefer, um, even an ottoman, but something ideally with a high back would be preferable for balance work. Um, and then we'll meet you right back, and then Emily and I are going to take it to the mats. So we're going to start out with a combination warm-up and flow for our yoga. Um, so we're going to start facing the chair in what's called Tadasana. Tadasana is mountain pose. So we'll start out with our hands down by our sides, and then feel free to close your eyes or let them become heavy-lidded so that you're really not focusing on the feedback of what you see, but you're going internally into the body and focusing on your breath and how it feels as it flows through all the major muscles and the blood. Take a nice deep breath in, and exhale, drop the shoulders down the back. And then on this next exhale, let's float the arms up to the ceiling. Inhale the arms up, and exhale, let them fall right back down to your sides. One more time, deep breath up and in, and exhale down. This time, we're going to inhale the arms up, and then as we bring the arms down, Em, we're gonna bring them to the corners of the chair. Let your head fall and be heavy, so you're gonna round your spine like a rainbow, so everything's soft, just like ice cream melting in the sun. Feel how great that feels on your back. Make any adjustments to the feet. You'll notice I'm moving back a little because I have the flexibility to come down a little lower. Stay here for a nice deep breath in. And then breathe the exhale into your hamstrings, into the back of the legs. Let's inhale to a flat back. You can place your hands or forearms or both onto the chair. Flat back so that if you had a cocktail or a cup of tea, it would rest right onto your back and it's nice and flat. Take a deep breath in here, and then on the exhale, either stay here, as you will with Emily, or notice that I'm going to take a little bit more, and then reach the hands down to the floor. One more inhale breath. Take a moment to soften the knees so they're not completely locked out and hyperextended. Let your neck go heavy. Maybe shake it yes, like you're saying yes. Maybe shake it no, side to side. Exactly, Emily, perfect. From here, we're gonna float all the way up to standing. Take it up one vertebrae at a time, slow and easy. We're just starting to warm up and maybe break our first sweat. So the first exercise that we're going to take, or the first asana or pose, is chair. So Emily's gonna take this a little bit wider, about hip distance apart, and then I'm going to bring the feet together. Both are correct. It's just two different options. Inhale the arms up. And as you exhale, sit back into your imaginary chair. Press your hands to the side. And if you're working with an ottoman or a chair that doesn't have a high back, press into the sides of the seat. Notice that the lats engage the sides of your back as well as your arms here. Take a peek down at the knees. Make sure that they're behind the toes. And then let your gaze be heavy. We're gonna breathe here in and out for three. Like shaking at him? Yeah. <laughs> and one, good. I'm sweating too. Mm -hmm. Inhale to stand. Let the hands come down by your sides. We're gonna do that one more time. Inhale the arms up. And then exhale, chair pose. Shoulders down away from the ears. It's easy to let them kind of come up here. A lot of tension in the neck and the upper traps. See if you can drop them down. Squeeze the knees, and if you can, and would like a little bit more sensation, sit down lower. Shaking is normal. It's a normal response to stress. Two more. And one more. And then slowly stand up. Yeah. Shake out the legs here. And then the next one we're gonna come into is pyramid pose, which is a great stretch for the back of the legs. So we're gonna walk the right leg first, just underneath the edge of the lip of the chair. And then you're gonna walk the back foot back about three to four feet. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of options. Emily, you can either turn the left foot out to the left. It's gonna give your hips a little bit more room to move. For those of us that are a little more flexible, we can turn the toes straight forward with the heel up or the heel down. 
Inhale the arms up. We're coming into the asana now. And on the exhale, bring the hands down to the lowest part of the chair that you can reach with a stretch, with sensation, but not discomfort. You can either gaze to the back of your chair, long neck, or you can let the head rest. We're gonna stay here for three breaths as well. And for two. And for one. Inhale the arms up. And then place the hands onto the hips. We're gonna take pyramid pose one more time. And then I want you to think about shifting both hips in one line. So with the right leg forward, left hip forward, right hip back. So both of your hip bones are straight. You'll get a bigger stretch here, so you may not be able to drop the hands as low. Hinge from the hips, keeping the hands there, and then slowly lower down like you're tipping water out of a pitcher. Stay here for the inhale breath. And if you'd like to, you can let the hands and forearms come down onto the chair, noticing the insensation, or noticing the sensation in the back of the legs. Shoulders down, abs tight. Getting the stretch, Emily? Yes. Good. If you're not, take a bigger step back. Good. Let's gently release and switch legs. Bring the left leg forward, right leg back. Remember that you can either turn the toes out um, with the right feet from it, like one or two o'clock. You can also keep them straight forward, heels up or heels down. We'll take the arm up first, inhale here. On the exhale, hinge at the hips, bring the arms down to the lowest possible part on your chair. Know that each side is different, so this may or not be more flexible. You'll notice that my left hip is shaking. It's a little tighter on this side. Again, neurological response to stress, totally fine. Take a nice deep breath in and exhale. Good, let's bring it up and place the hands onto the hips. So let's take a couple of twists here, getting two hips in one line. And if you can't, bigger step out to the side, pick the heel up, anything you need to adjust, but the back leg is the focus. From here, let's hinge at the hips forward. And then either again, choose to keep the hands on the hips, it's a little harder on the balance, or you can place the hands down onto the chair. Hmm. Let's take one more inhale breath. And then slowly release and come up. Good. Bring the feet together. And then now we're gonna come into warrior one. So let's start again with the right leg forward. We're gonna bring the ankle underneath the lip of the chair and then bring the knee directly over the ankle. So adjust as, however you need to adjust. You'll see that now I've got ankle directly underneath and then step the back foot back so that it's in a similar angle to pyramid pose. Big difference is the knee is bent. And then from here, hips forward, Emily, and then sweep the arms up. Pinkies come in. And then if you'd like to, you can take a small back bend here. Really nice. Good. If you lose the balance, no big deal. It's all normal. Good. And then again, that two hips in one line. Beautiful. Stay here for the inhale breath. And then as if I was pulling with a string, lift the heart up to the ceiling. Lovely. Good. I'm going to challenge you. Yes, exactly. She knew exactly where I was going with that one. Good. Hold here for three. And you can drop the back heel if you'd like. You're in crescent pose, but warrior one is heel down. Two and one. Let's release opposite side. Good. So. Warrior one, you can actually keep the heel down and then just angle it out a little bit. And that's the only difference between warrior one and crescent. Well, if I put my heel down. Yeah, it's really tough. So let's take the left leg forward. You wanna line up the ankle and the knee. Feel free to put your hands down like I am to get that balance. And then heel and toe out on that imaginary diagonal line. Hips forward, sweep the arms up and then string from the heart pulls you up as you honor your practice and send your heart and good tidings straight up to the ceiling. The gaze is up at the ceiling or at your thumbs, feeling the stretch in the right hip flexor, feeling a little bit of strength in that quad and in the bum. See if you can lean back a little bit more and then gently release. <sighs> good. All right, we've got one more here. We're gonna come into warrior two. Different, but not by much. 
We're gonna take right foot out so that it is facing um, the corner of your mat and a parallel with the back of your mat. This time we'll start with the left foot, same side we were just on, and then walk it forward. Walk the foot back on the opposite leg. Get, take a little bit more space here. Heels are in line on an imaginary line. And then again, we're gonna to try to line the knee up with our chair. From here, use your hands to open up the hips to the side. Notice the knee wants to travel with us. Your goal is to keep the knee over the pinky toe, but still open up the hips. From here, torso is long, and then we extend the arms out to the sides. Gaze is over because we're working left side, left fingertips. Shoulders down away from the ears. And then I want you to really focus on strengthening the right leg, that back leg. Gorgeous, that looks really nice. Zip up the abs, good. Notice that Emily got a little bit more length when she did that, good, there we go. Settle in, beautiful. Holding here for three, relax through the neck, good. Two, perfect. And one, gently release, that was great. Let's do it on the opposite side. Sometimes we don't realize when we're holding tension no. in the shoulders. <laughs> Step it back far enough, and guess what? If it's not far enough or it's too far, readjust. Line the knee up. Sorry, you're getting maybe what is my better or not better side. <laughs> the knee is lined up with the ankle. Torso is long. Open up the hips. Your right knee over your right pinky toe, and then extend the arms long, shoulders down, and then settle into the pose. We're here for three. And for two, lengthen through the neck, draw the navel in, get longer. Hold here for one, and gently release. Good, nicely done. Let's grab some water, okay. and then we're gonna move into cardio-based portion of our workout. So, I know we just built a sweat, I hope you did too, but if not, guess what? It's coming right now. Great. We're gonna start off with a jumping jack series here. So Emily, we're gonna have the chair to our backs. Okay. So we'll actually be facing this side wall. And we're coming into regular traditional jumping jacks for 30 seconds. Okay. Ready to go? Ready. You guys ready at home? Here we go. Good. You can jump on the mat, you can take it wider and jump off your mat. It's completely up to you. The navel is drawn in, but not too tight so that you can't breathe. We're holding here, we still have 15 more seconds. Jumping in and out, basic jumping jacks. This is an option as well if you'd like to soften it a little bit. We still have five more here. Four, three, two, and one. Let's slow it down. We're gonna bring the heart rate down by doing some squat taps to the chair. Line the feet up, hip distance apart. And then from here, hands can be either on the hips. I prefer them in front, completely up to you. Emily, let's squat it back. Little tap, right back up. Little tap, right back up. Here's three. This is what's called active recovery. So instead of standing there and having our heart rate really pummel down quickly, we want to try to slow it down. So we're letting it come down slowly, but with control. Let's do four more here. Three. Two, and one. Perfect. All right, Em. I think, you know what? Let's face the camera. Okay. So the next one we'll do is a wide jack with a bicep curl. So if you need to move your chair out of the way, if you're in a small space, take a moment here and move it out of the way. I'm gonna give you one demo just so you know. We're gonna do a wide jack with a bicep curl. So we're going to jump out wide and curl the arms out to the sides and then back in together. Wanna to try? Perfect. All right, 30 seconds on the clock. Get ready at home. Here we go. Remember to breathe. Breathing is paramount. And that's one of the greatest things we learned from yoga is that without the breath, there is nothing else. Because if we can't breathe, our neurological response system is just gonna go haywire. We're gonna get dizzy, fatigued, nauseous and our workout's gonna end a lot sooner than we anticipated. So you may think that working harder is better and not worrying about the breath, but in the long run, you'll get a longer, better workout 
and a better cardiorespiratory system here. We've got one more, and take it down. All right, let's turn. Let's let our heart rate come down a little softer, and then take our 10 squat taps. Here's 10, and up, nine. How are these feeling so far? Eight. Good. Really good. Seven, six, five. Good, four more. Notice that Emily and I are going at a different pace. That's totally fine. So if there's a couple of you that are doing this, which we hope, because fitness is more fun with friends, you guys can all go at a different pace. We're probably at 10, so let's stop here. All right, Emily, our next one, basic jog in place. We have a tricep kickback. So for the kickbacks, I'm gonna give you guys just a little side. Elbows up nice and high, fists, and then press back to a full extension. So we're working the third head of the tricep. So those guys that stop wiggling when we're wearing 10 cups. So, basic jog in place. And then let's start kicking back. Here we go, 30 seconds. Kick back. If you wanna get fancy, you can do single arm, single arm. Make sure you're smiling and make sure you're breathing. Great. If you wanna pick up the pace, you can do that as well. The great thing is, is that this is your workout. You work to your abilities and your strengths, and you work with your goals in mind. Let's do 10 more seconds here. The abs are engaged, the shoulders are down. Five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Let's take our active recovery, come into the squats, and know that if you need a rest, guess what, your chair is right here. You can do half the amount, squat down, stay, and then come back up. Let's do two, and up, three, four, five, good. Six, each time try to reach that tushy back further. Three more. Last two, and one. Excellent. All right, we've got heel taps. So, we're gonna do heel taps here. Heel tap, heel tap, or heel tap, heel tap, heel tap, heel tap, with a tricep, I'm sorry, with a lateral raise. We just did our triceps. Out to the side, so it'll look like this. Or, here for modification. Ready to go? Yes. 30 seconds on the clock. Let's do it. You don't have to breathe in that fashion, but it keeps me a little cooler so that I can keep talking and working. It helps me to do a longer exercise. I don't know how you're talking through all of this. That's <laughs> so what happens when you've been doing this for a while and you make it your job. I guess it could distract you. Yeah, well, what's great is I love my job. Five seconds, four, three, two, and one. You know what's coming. Now let's do our squat taps. Turn it around, and then let's come to a seat. A little tap, right back up. A little tap, right back up. Three, four, five, five more here. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good, nice job. Yes. Let's grab some water. So, wouldn't be a cardio fit workout without push-ups. We have a couple of options for your push-ups. Option one, which is a little bit harder of the two, is going to be placing the hands here on the seat of the chair, walking the feet out to the edge of your mat, and then tucking the tailbone. A little bit easier with the tushy up, a little bit harder with the tush tucked, and then we come down and up. Option two is going to be using the back of the chair. A little bit higher, so there's a little bit less gravity that's going to push us down and prevent us from coming back up without ease. Lowering down and pushing up. So take a moment, choose your poison, and then let's get set up. 
If you're wondering if this can be done with knees on the floor, definitely. Probably a cushion under the knees. And then these can definitely also be done here as well. So, let's get ready. Ready. You set? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna make her do them the other way next set. <laughs> okay, here we go. Got me. <laughs> 30 seconds on the clock, everybody. Get your hands lined up. For safety, if you're worried about the chair sliding, push it against the wall. All right, here we go. <sighs> Try to get the chest all the way down to the chair. And if you're thinking, Jen, you're crazy, then that's fine. Come down, get enough of a bend, and press up. As long as you feel like there's work occurring, your shoulders are down and your abs are engaged, I'm a happy girl because I know that you're working to your fullest potential. If you're thinking, eh, this is not so bad, I probably could work a little harder, then guess what? No one's looking. This is your goal, your job. This is what your potential is worth. So if you can do more, guess what? I want you to do more. I'm not afraid to ask for it, that's my job. So guess what, push. You've got 10 more seconds here, give me all you got. Breathe, five seconds, four, three, two, and one, ease off. Drop the knees, and then let's take a little child's pose here just to stretch out the shoulders. <sighs> Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, let's come back up. Our next exercise is going to be a chair body row. So I'll show you guys first. Two options as well, I like options. Option one is here, feet hip distance apart, slight bend in the knees, and then you're going to row the top of the chair towards the chest, squeezing the elbows back, getting the engagement of your shoulder blades back and up. Option two is grabbing onto the seat of the chair and the top, and then same idea, pulling the chair up, bending the elbows, squeezing the shoulder blades back and together. So, pick your option at home. Emily, get ready. And here we go. 30 seconds on the clock. Soft knees no matter what. Abs tight to protect the spine. Let's do it. Up and down. I like to gaze down at the floor because it keeps my neck in alignment so that I'm not cleaning up. So I know that you're probably looking at the screen, but guess what? We're gonna be here for a full 30 seconds. Once you see what we're doing, find a spot on the floor and focus down so you can focus internally on what you're doing and not what Emily and I are doing. Because what matters most, guess what, is you. Let's do 10 more seconds here. These are tough. Five seconds, four, three, two, and one. Drop your chair, carefully of course. Make sure your feet are out of the way. And then let's get set up for our next exercise. So we're gonna do tricep dips. So you have a couple of options. Option one is going to be with your feet on the edges of the chair. I'm sorry, with your hands on the edges of the chair and your feet on the floor. That would be interesting, right? And then from here, keep the tush close to the chair and then lower down until the elbows and the shoulders are about parallel and then press up. Option two is gonna be one or both feet out, down and up. So, pick your poison and let's get ready. Ready, Miss M? Ready. All right, let's go. Drop it down, Miss Girl. Down and up, good. Take your time. If you feel that your elbows are bowing out to the sides, see if you can pull them in exactly. And then the gaze is straight in front so that the neck is neutral. Abs are nice and tight. And the reason why we stay close to the chair, you've got less than 10 seconds here, is so that there's not too much of an extension in the shoulder. Otherwise, it's a lot of pressure here in the shoulder joint. Let's do one more for Mammy. Perfect, have a seat on the chair. Bring the arms up overhead. Let's take a little tricep stretch. Feels even better when you get to just watch and not do it. And then opposite side. Good, I'll do the next one, I promise. Okay, good, all right. Benefits of teaching. Oh, of course. All right, next one, bicep curls. So we're gonna get a little creative with our chair here. Some of you may have three pound, five pound weights at home if you wanna grab those, most certainly do. We're gonna utilize our chair for everything that we can get. So we're gonna flip the chair over. Again, be careful doing so. All right, line yourself up. And then 
It's a shorter range, but trust me, you'll feel it. We're gonna bicep curl the chair here. Straight up and down. Straight up and down. Ready, Emily? Here we go. 30 seconds. Curl it up and down. Soft knees. Curl it up. Always. Yeah. We try not to ever lock the knees. Harsh joints puts the pressure into the joint as opposed to soft, which puts the pressure into the muscle. And it's not so much pressure, it's work. And that's what we want. Feeling these, right? Yes. Yeah. My abs. Mm -hmm. You've got to stabilize the weight of the chair. Exactly. Good call. Let's do five more seconds here. Four more. Three, two, and one. Perfect. Chair comes down carefully. Let's flip it back over. And okay, let's break it this time. You're right. Grab some water, towel off if you need, and then we have second round. Ah, oh, water feels great. All right, Ms. M. Second set of push-ups. So you have a choice. Okay. Your hands are down there regardless. You have knees or no knees. I mean, but I love it. And she'll do no knees. It's good love. Good love. Mm -hmm. Pop up. All right, let's take it down. Exactly. Hate me now, love me later. Line the hands up. And for those of you that have any wrist issues, like you guys know, sometimes my wrists are a little tweaky. You can be out here or here. It doesn't matter. It's completely up to comfort. So let's line it up and then get ready to rumble. See if you can tuck the tailbone in. Feet are on the mat so you don't slide. And here we go, 30 seconds. Remember to breathe. Chest comes down to the bench as far as you can. Core is strong. Shoulders down away from the ears. Nice neutral alignment in the spine. And if that means gibberish to you, tuck in your butt. Less than stick it out. Let's do 10 more seconds here. Nice job, you weren't kidding. Emily told me, oh, I do these all the time. <laughs> She's right, these look great. Let's do three more, cause you can. Two more, Miss Girl. Sweaty hands are sweaty. One more. Nicely done, <laughs> good. Yep, yeah, if your hands are sweaty, grab a towel, press pause, come back to us. We wanna make sure that you're not slipping on here. <laughs> Safety first, always. We're gonna go into our bent over rows. Okay. You're gonna try it. To, uh, do it your way. <laughs> They're both my way. Well, it's just harder. The harder way. Uh-huh. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a side view, just so you can see the difference. Make sure that if you're wondering, am I doing this right? You can see it from a couple of different sides. Emily's gonna take it straight forward. Hip distance apart for the feet, soft knees. You're slightly bent over, core is strong. And then drop the bottom corner of the chair down, and then let's row. Here we go, straight up. Smile. And then know that you're doing exactly what you need to be doing. So instead of gazing up at the camera, or up at the screen, or up at Emily or I, take it down. Focus on you. Doesn't matter if the phone is ringing, you'll get back to it. This is your time, your workout. Make it important, as important as everybody else in your life. You've gotta prioritize your fitness so that you feel great, and then you can help everybody else around you feel great too. Let's do five more here. Three more. Two more. Core strong, Emily. One more. And down. Good. Drop the chair. Oh, yeah. And then let's come into our tricep dips. Have a seat. Ah, take a nice deep breath. Yes. Hope you guys are feeling it at home. We're feeling it here. Let's line the hands up. Tushy just outside, so you're not too far out. And let's take it down and up, 30 seconds. Here we go, down and up. <sighs> Inhale, exhale, we exhale on the work, and the work is pushing against gravity, straight up. <sighs> Good, tummy's tucked. The shoulders are down as best you can. I know it's hard when you're pulling up but it's here that we get that full straight arm. Lock out those triceps. Five seconds more. Four, three, two, and one. Have a seat on the chair. And let's take that tricep stretch. Pick an arm, you like at two. Take it up, tricep stretch. And other side. 
Hmm. Let's take it to our bicep curl. So we're gonna flip the chair over carefully. Try not to knock the water bottle over. And if it's too tight with the chair, know that if you've worked with us before, you can grab two bottles of water, you can grab two cans of soda, um, you can grab, hopefully you don't have soda in the house, so let's say two cans of um, veggies. Um, two children's toys, two pillows, even two books. As long as you have something creating resistance, you can even use your own arm to resist. So, hopefully that gave you a little bit of a breath break. And then without further ado, let's get into the show. Grab your chair. And let's curl. So notice that Emily and I have our chairs two different directions. Works both ways, doesn't matter. Curl it up, curl it down. Soft knees, abs tight. Nice, Emily. Core strong. Strong mind, strong body, everybody. Your gaze is forward. I'm turning just to look at you guys and to make sure that you're focused and driven. You've got about 10 more seconds here. Let's keep curling it up, dropping the shoulders, engaging the abs, engaging the mind-body connection. Stay focused, stay present. Let's do one more here because we can. Strong mind, strong will. Drop the chair. Ah, job well done. Let's flip the chairs back over to their starting positions. And let's grab some water. It's very important to hydrate. We're reoxygenating the blood, moving the toxins out as we sweat. We wanna make sure that we're giving our body back the moisture that it needs so that we can continue on our practice. Oh yes. Ready for some balance? Ready. All right. Our next series is our balance series. It's really important for balance. It helps to stabilize the core, lower back helps to prevent injury, um, and also whittles and chisels this away. So we're gonna start off first um, with our, I had a bond moment, with our standing bow pose. So, if you guys haven't done bow before, every once in a while I have a little thought that disappears and then comes back in. So for standing bow pose, yeah, right? I think it's normal for most people. From here, you're gonna take your right hand and put it out to the side, like you're saying, slap me five. And then you're going to grab onto the ankle of your right foot. So right hand out, grab onto right ankle. And then from here, squeeze the knees together, reach the left arm up, and then simultaneously kick right foot into right hand, left hand to the top of your chair. Your gaze is towards your left hand or to the floor. And then as you kick into the hand, see if you can get the leg higher, opening up the hip flexor. You'll notice that I'm not gazing towards um, you guys because if so, I'll lose my balance. It's very important to find a DRISD or a focal point to help you to balance and stabilize. We'll hold here for one more full breath in. Exhale, and then gently release. Knees together toward one another, foot down, hand down. My legs were shaking in that mm -hmm. one. Yeah, it's tough. Now, Emily's gonna stay here. I'm gonna show you another option if the balance is challenging even in the beginning with the one hand, one foot here. Start here. So on that other side, we're gonna start with right hand on the chair for me. Left hand out for Emily, grab onto the ankle, and then I'm gonna take a little hop back. So I'm already here stabilizing, and then let's kick foot into hand, hand into foot. You'll notice this time my elbow is bent, but my gaze is still forward. Kicking is the option and the, op, um, the goal of stretching. So hand into foot, foot into hand, kick up, kick higher, kick longer. Feel that stretch, hold it for one more inhale breath here, and then exhale, release the stretch, knees together, and then feet down. Nicely done. I'm gonna turn my chair back around and we're going to do balancing stick pose. For this, we'll bring our hands up into steeple position. So all 10 fingers up, you're going to cross the thumbs 
and then release the middle finger, uh, pointer fingers rather. So we're reaching straight up to the ceiling. For balancing stick pulls, we'll start with the right foot first. So I'm gonna give you guys a little demo first, all right, Em? Okay. So we're gonna step forward, right foot, and then you're going to reach the fingers to the top of the chair, and then the left leg is back and you're reaching long. So um, I would suggest, let's see, maybe one, two, about two big steps back, and then bend and reach forward. Make sure you can reach the top of your chair so that you know that you, the, the chair will be there for balance. All right, here we go. Arms come up to steeple. Reach up, reach long. Glue the biceps to the sides of the ears. Take a step forward, right foot, and then left leg kicks back. So you'll see that now my forearms are on the chair. It's a little bit more balanced here for me. If you wanted to make it harder, you would step further away from the chair. I want you to think about reaching your fingertips forward and reaching that left leg back. Really feel the stretch in both legs. Feel the integrity of the stretch in the arms too. If the arms feel like they're not doing much, squeeze the biceps and really reach the fingertips forward. One more inhale breath here, Emily. And then exhale, gently release. Step back hands down by your sides. Definitely wobbly on that one. Yeah, let's do the other side. So from here, bring the arms up to steeple position. Take a nice deep breath in, squeeze the arms to the sides of the ears. Take that step with the left foot forward, which you're already there. And then here we go, simultaneously reach forward, reach that back leg long. I'm gonna give her a little bit of an adjust here so that she can lean into me. And notice that Emily's hip is rising. I want you to think about right hip down, Good, so two hips in one line, similar to the other poses that we were doing, particularly warrior one, good. Really nice and long through the toes, long through the arms, feel the integrity of all parts of the stretch. Back of the leg, back of the leg, quads, lats, triceps, all through the arms. One more inhale breath here, and I'm gonna help you ease out, slowly let the leg come down, arms come up, and then I'll release the balance. Nicely done. Shaky. Yeah, really nicely done. Still good. Mm -hmm. Still feel it. Whew. Okay. Our next sequence is going to be a, uh, another great body weight strength sequence with our chair. We're going to start out with some single leg sit stands or sit squats. So I'll have you start out seated, feet hip distance apart with just the edge of your bum onto the chair. You want to try to line up so your knees are somewhere between your ankle and just where your toes start, just at that bridge. From here, I want you to take a moment to stand up and then sit back down. Make sure the chair is behind you. Now, the fun part. You have a choice of either resting on a straight leg heel, straight leg ball of the foot, or foot in the air for a single leg sit stand. So I'll give you a little demo. Up and down, or straight up, straight down, or heel. So naturally using the other foot is going to give you a little bit more balance, a little more support, but you do what you can. Maybe you do half and half if you get a little tired. So we're gonna start out on the right foot, Emily. So your okay. left foot is going to be your support foot. Okay. The right leg is gonna be the bulk of the work. So you really think about squeezing your glutes, particularly what's called your glute medius. This is what we're trying to really get to fire. Helps for tracking of the knee, helps to strengthen the bum, and also great for shaping. So hands in genie, hands in namaste, hands on hips. All right, without further ado, let's get to getting. Here we go, 30 seconds. Either heel down, ball the foot down, or straight up and down. I like to find a drizzy point here, so you'll notice that I'm looking straight forward. I find that chair. it's a little easier to balance. And then if single leg doesn't feel good, if it's a little too tough, do, sing, do a double leg squat. Both feet down, tap, and up. Completely always an option. Remember, it's your workout. You work out to your strength and your ability. And as you continue to do this, maybe you come back to this workout at the end of the week. If you did it on a Monday, try to get on a Friday and see if maybe you can do a few more reps or you can make them a little bit more challenging. Let's do two more here. We're just starting to woo, round out about our 30 seconds. These are tough, no doubt about it. And then let's come down, take a break. 
and let's switch legs. When I show these to my clients, they automatically think, oh, there's a chair involved, it's gotta be easy. And then once you realize you're lifting your whole body weight on one foot, you feel it, how it's tough. All right, Em, let's do that left side. Here we go, straight up. Good. Emily, try to find a focal point in front of you. I find that it's a little bit easier to find the balance. If you're looking around, you take your proprioception, which is your eye-hand coordination, and really challenge it that much more. So if at some point these get too easy, even if the foot is not on the ground, you can start looking up, looking down, guarantee that's gonna make it harder. Let's do about 15 seconds more here. And you might find that one side's easier. This is my dominant side. I'm a lefty by dominance, or I guess by birth. <laughs> so this side's a lot easier for me. That right side was a lot tougher balance-wise and also strength-wise. Keep the core engaged. Keep thinking about firing that butt. So if you don't know what that means, squeeze your tush. Let's do two more here. And one more. Straight up and back down. Good. Whew. The next things we're going to do are, um, I guess you can call them knee lifts or knee ins. We're gonna emulate holding on to a captain's chair and lifting our legs up and down. Hands come onto the sides of the chair. You're gonna lean back slightly, scoot your tush to the edge of the chair, and then knees in and tap down. Knees in, tap toes down. Good, Emily, I'm gonna have you keep doing it that way. You'll see that I'm gonna ramp it up just a little bit by extending the legs out long. And our 30 seconds has started. So let's go. Keep it working. Somewhere in between this would be knees in, don't tap down. So right now I'm kind of in that middle range. So you've got three different options here. You can do all three, combination of the two, or maybe you start where Emily's at. And then in this last five seconds, starting now, you can make them a little harder. Three more seconds, nice Emily. I think she knew I was talking to her. <laughs> and one more. <laughs> Nicely done, good. <sighs> the next one is also for the abs. So we're gonna start out by taking cactus arms. So I'm gonna have you bring your arms out. We call these either cactus arms or goal arms, like a football field. And then, just like we would in bicycle, I'm gonna have you bring your right elbow towards your left knee and back down. Perfect, exactly. And then switch other side. Good, we'll do this for 30 seconds. Emily, you're gonna keep your abs engaged throughout. Good, and the arms keep coming to cactus arms and the smile is just a fringe benefit because we're having fun. Good, keep the core strong. On that last 10 seconds, if you can, I'll challenge you to pick up the pace just a little bit more. So 10 seconds right now. See if you can pick up the pace a little bit more. Perfect, so you get a little bit more cardiovascular as well as strength. Five seconds, four, three, two, and one, perfect. Nicely done. Uh-huh. All righty. Let's now take it to the floor and do some bridging also for the glutes. So this is our abs, butt, and guts part. So let's bring it to the floor, feet on the outsides of the chair, and then use your hands to help you scoot your butt all the way as close to the chair as possible. Lie down onto your back, and then heels are going to come onto the tops of the chair. For some reason, if that doesn't feel good on your Achilles heel, you can also go with um, the arches of the feet on the edge of the chair. For some of you, this may cause your hamstrings to fire and maybe get a charley horse. If that's the case, do these on the floor instead. Push the chair out of the way. Let's line the feet up, Emily, in whichever position you prefer. Head down, arms by your sides with palms down, option one. Arms out to the sides like a T, palms up. Option two, a little harder because you can no longer press into your forearms and elbows and into your hands. It forces you to use the bum a little bit more. So I'm gonna take that option here. From here, stay for the inhale. Let's exhale, lift the tush all the way up, roll it up, come down halfway, and then lift up, squeeze. Halfway down, lift up, squeeze. Down and up, and down and up. Good, we're here for 30 seconds. Squeeze. For some of you at home, this is challenging enough. For some of you that want a little more, leg up, single leg. We're doing this twice around. So if you're doing the single leg, remember to switch to the other side on the next set. 10 seconds more. Squeeze the butt right up. 
Good. You'll notice I picked a focal point on the ceiling. Again, single leg a little harder, but in general, this is harder for balance. Let's do one more here. Up, place the foot down if you were doing single leg. Slowly roll the back down one piece at a time. From here, we rest the feet and the backs of the legs, the calves, onto our chair. Scoot in a little bit more if you found that you've moved back a little bit on the bridging. And then hands come right behind the head, and then we'll go into our ab crunch series. Hands behind the head here. And then we're gonna start out basic, straight up, straight down. Elbows out to the sides, draw your navel in, and then curl it straight up and down. You're looking at your toes. Straight up, straight down. Draw the navel in. Exhale as you come up. And down, lift it up and down. Good, nice long neck, and that's why we're looking at our toes and not the ceiling. So we're keeping it in what's called a neutral cervical spine, which basically means that it's that natural curvature of the spine. Otherwise, if you look up at the ceiling, you'll find that you're actually craning your neck a little bit, and it's not very comfortable or good for the neck. Let's do about 10 seconds more here. Exhaling as we lift, drawing the navel in to engage the abdominals, rectus abdominals. You can even, if you know how to Kegel, add a Kegel to engage your pelvic floor muscles. Three more, two more, one more, and release and come down. Hug the knees into the chest. Ooh, take a breath. And then we're gonna come into that second set. So, line the feet up for bridge. Choose your hands either down by your sides or out to the sides like a T. And then lift all the way up, peel it up, hips up, hip flexors open and wide. And then here we go. Halfway down, all the way up. Halfway down, all the way up. If you did single leg, guess what? Leg up. Halfway, all the way up. Halfway, all the way up. We're about halfway there. Stay with it. If you need a break, you come down. If the hamstring starts to seize or charley horse, come down, take a break. Last 10 seconds here. Smile if you're not smiling. <laughs> if you're grunting, relax your jaw. How are you doing, Em? I'm doing good. good. I was grunting. Yeah, I was too. That's why I said I figure if I wasn't, I'm the instructor. You guys at home are probably grinding your teeth. <laughs> Three more seconds. Two and one. Place the foot down if you're single leg. Lower tushy down, ha. Whew. And then let's set up for the abs. Bring the hands behind the head. Rest your calves, maybe scoot in if you slid back at all. And then here we go, second set. Draw the navel in, and then as we curl up head, neck, and shoulders, you're looking at the toes. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down, exhale up. Good. Focus on the breath. Again, if you like to Kegel, you can engage that. It's your pelvic floor muscles. If you're not sure how to do it, it's almost as if you have to go to the bathroom, but you're holding it in. It's that sensation of kind of pulling up on those deep core muscles. Last 10 seconds here. Focus on the breath. The neck and the head get tired, take a break. Remember, this is your workout. Five seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Bring it down, and let's hug the knees in. This is my favorite stretch. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> All right, let's come back up. Wee, the roll. And then we've got a uh, second set of the first three exercises that we did and then we take it to our cool down. So we're gonna start with the single leg squats first. Okay. Have a seat, feet hip distance apart, and then let's start out this time with the left leg first. So left leg is gonna be the work leg, right heel, toe, or foot out, hands wherever you choose, 30 seconds on the clock, smile on the face, and here we go. Lift it up and down. Good, focus on the spot. Maybe straight in front of you. Maybe you even place your water bottle on the floor about six feet in front of you to give yourself that focal point if your wall is all white and there isn't anything to look at. Good. The abs are engaged. 
and you're really squeezing that left butt cheek, both up and down. Because if you remember from past episodes that we've had, your glutes work to decelerate. So you're using quad and butt to come up. You're using the glutes to help you come down. Ooh, I lost my focal point and I started to lose my balance. Five more seconds. Three, two, and one. Good, switch legs. Other leg comes out. You ready, Em? Ready. Let's do this, here we go. Straight up, without further ado. Remember, if you need to, press pause, take a break, grab water, towel off. We'll be waiting for you. Good to work out with company, so yeah, stay with us. Especially when they push you. Oh, heck yeah. I know that I work harder when I'm with somebody else. You know, it's that. Me too. It's the fun camaraderie, and you know, there's also fun, healthy competition. As long as it's healthy. Less 10 seconds. Keep the breath and keep smiling. Five seconds here. Four, three, two, and one, and take it down. Good. All right. Now we go into the knee lift, our second to last exercise for those of you that are counting. Scoot towards the end. Hands are on the side. Ready, Emily? Ready. Uh, let's do it. Knees in, knees out. In and tap, or in, no tap, or in. Straight leg. Your choice, your challenge, your workout. Focus on the breath. Good. Notice the arms straighten and they bend. Just to keep the soft elbow. We're already 15 seconds in. 15 more, stay with it. Core strong, sitting tall, shoulders down, abs engaged. Five seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Good, feet down. Let's find those cactus arms. Bring the arms out to the sides like goal posts. And then opposite elbow, opposite knee. This time we'll start with left elbow, right knee. Here we go. And switch. Good. Think more knee to elbow than elbow to knee. It's easier if I bring my elbow down. It's harder if I bring my knee up because you really get those bottom okay. abs, those rectus abdominals, right? Feel the difference? Yes. It's easy to cheat on these. Don't do it. Bring the knees up. It's our last exercise. Make this your best exercise. Instead of, oh, I'm tired, I'll just do this kind of halfway. Uh-uh. Opposite thought. Glass is half full. Make this one your best one yet. Find that extra, that little piece of you that knows that you want this and you're gonna make it work for you. Let's do 10 more, 10, nine, eight, seven, knee in, six, five, four, three, two, last one here. Right, left, and release. Woo! Great job. Nicely done, Emily. Thank you. Nice job for everyone at home. Let's sit onto our chair and breathe. Feel free to cross at the ankles or keep the feet flat on the ground, your choice. Emily, we're gonna take a simple breath. Inhale the arms up to the ceiling and exhale them down. Once again, inhale the arms up, and exhale the arms down. Good. Keep the hands down by your sides. Let your right hand stay on the chair. And then from here, we're gonna take a mermaid stretch, similar to what we would do in Pilates. So starting with the left hand, inhale your left arm up. On the exhale, side bend over the chair. Inhale, and then exhale, left arm down. Let's bring the right arm up. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower the arm down. Once again, inhale the left arm up. Exhale, side bend. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, left arm down, right side. Right arm comes up. Side bend to the right. Inhale, lift, and then release it down. Perfect. 
We're gonna take a side twist here. So take your left hand, place it on the right corner of your um, chair, right by your right thigh. Exactly, and then right hand to the top corner of the right side of the chair. So you're looking over your right shoulder. Think about twisting a rag out that has water in it and try to twist every drop of water out. Inhale to lift your torso even higher, exactly. And then look over that right shoulder. Twist out that wet towel or that wet rag. Gently release and let's switch sides. Right hand to the left corner and then left hand up. Grow tall, wring out that towel, look over the left shoulder. Inhale here. Exhale, see if you can twist any more. Inhale and gently release. Ah. Figure four stretch for the hips. Take the right ankle over the left knee. You may want to scoot forward a little bit. It's up to you if it's more comfortable, do so. It is for me. And then from here, slowly forward fold over the legs until you feel a stretch in the right hip. The hands can rest on your shins. You can let them hang down. It's up to you, whatever is comfortable. If you're not feeling enough of a stretch, you can gently press down on the right knee and you'll feel a little bit more in the hip. Gently release that stretch and then switch sides. Left ankle over right knee, sit it tall, and then gently bow forward, forward fold. Again, a little more, press into the knee, you'll get a deeper stretch. Gently release, take it up. Good, let's come to a standing position and then face the chair. We'll take a back stretch here, a little cat-cow. Place the hands onto the corners of the chair. Walk the feet back and then imagine as though you're getting pulled like a tug of war. The chair is pulling you that way, your tush is pulling you this way. And feel the stretch all through the arms and the side of the lats, right underneath the armpits. Should feel like a great stretch for the back and the lats. Good. We're gonna get a little deeper in the lats here, Emily. So now I'm gonna have you keep your right hand where it is. I'm gonna have you take your left hand and bring it just above your left, uh, above your right hand, exactly. And then sit into your left hip bone. So in here, you should feel that stretch mm -hmm. on the left side lat. Good. Gently walk the hands over to the left most side, left hand to the corner, right hand on top, and then sit into the left cheek, feeling the stretch into that right lat. Knees are soft, just in case they've locked out. Sometimes they do, and that's okay. And release, take it up. Let's do another chest stretch here. So you can face the side of your chair, press the left hand or the right hand in, depending on which way you're facing, and then twist away from the chair to get a pec stretch in through the area of the armpit. You can do this on the wall if you're not feeling it here. I like to drop my chin as you can see, it's a little more comfortable on my neck. And then release, opposite side, press the hand in. I'm gonna turn it this way so I can still face you guys. And press here. Again, feeling that stretch in the area of the armpit. And gently release. Thank you so much for joining us. Emily, thank you. You were thank fantastic. You. Right. Have a great week. And I hope that you do this workout again with me and that each time you do it, you get better and better in those sit squats. Eventually, if it's not already, that other foot's coming off the floor. Nicely done, we'll see you soon.